All right. Welcome back, Connors. Welcome back. We're filming Why this. Always yawn right when we start. <laughs> it's fine. Excuse me. It could be a staple of our videos. Um, no, I think you saying all right already is. <laughs> yeah, I know. We only need one staple. So we're filming this episode here at night. At nighttime. That's why the lighting looks. Yeah, it looks different. Not great. <laughs> I look like a vampire. But this is episode number one forty-five. Run it. Thank you guys for coming back to our channel and for <laughs> subscribing because I know you did. I know you subscribed. I know you pressed that red button. Also jump over to our vlog channel and subscribe and like those videos too over there. We appreciate y'all. Um, the description, the link is in the description. <laughs> you always have trouble saying that. Thanks. All right. So today we're going to do a video called top 10 British customs that totally confuse everyone else. So let's see if they confuse us. I would not be shocked if they do. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today Mojo. we're counting down our picks <laughs> for the top 10 British customs that totally confuse everyone else. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at some UK <laughs> traditions that may seem run of the mill I to us. To but I used to do that back home. We would find hills and we would totally just roll down them and just run down them. It is really fun, but you could get pretty hurt. We we roll, but like we roll flat yeah. sideways. I, I've always wanted to do where you get like a monster truck wheel and you get inside of it and you go down a hill. Oh my God. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that before. <laughs> Look a little bit odd to the rest of the world. Which weird UK tradition is your favorite? Let us know below. Number 10, Punch and Judy. Once thought of as primarily a seaside entertainment, the Punch and Judy show can now be found at carnivals and family events across the country. The chaotic comedy puppet show began to gain popularity during the Renaissance period and remained a firm favourite with the British public well into the 20th century. Like the pantomime at Christmas, Punch and Judy tells a story using familiar stock characters and encourages audience participation. Mr Punch is the star of the show. The squeaky-voiced anti-hero traditionally wrestles crocodiles, beats his wife, Judy, murders interfering policemen, and sometimes puts the baby through a sausage-making machine. But it's all wholesome it's family awesome. fun. His famous catchphrase is... That sounds pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure the kids uh, go home. <laughs> is, that's the way to do it. Number 9. Marie Lude. The British Isles still celebrate a wide range of historic cultural traditions which differ from coast to coast. In January alone, our citizens parade a straw bear through the streets of Cambridgeshire, read poetry over a haggis in Scotland, and burn Viking galleons haggis. in the Shetland Isles. But one of the strangest customs that survives today is a midwinter folk tradition originating in Wales. The Mary Lude is a mischievous white horse, or rather, a horse's skull attached to a pole, controlled by a person hidden beneath a white Wait, cloth, dressed with festive. Sound, yeah, this sounds similar to one of the videos we did for the Christmas traditions, but no, I think it was a different country that does yeah, that. I don't remember it. Maybe but, it was somewhere. But they, in the other one, I think they dress up as something and they have like the head of the horse or whatever. No, I think it was that, but they said they don't do it that much anymore, except in like smaller areas. Got it. Lights and streamers, she is paraded through the town at Yuletide, accompanied by huh. Wasilis. Oh, you're right. Yeah, if that. she gains entry to your house, your household will be blessed with luck for the year. Number eight, is dressing that, yeah. up posh and going to the races. Going to the races is not a tradition unique to the UK, but it's been around since Roman times and shows no signs of decreasing in popularity. As Britain's second right. largest spectator sport, horse racing is no longer the preserve of old men and aristocrats. Across the year, hundreds of us get our glad rags on for a grand day out at Cheltenham, Aintree or Ascot, but there are over 60 race courses across the UK, most dating back to the 1920s. There's nothing casual about race day. Formal attire is a requirement. That's suits for the men and an opportunity for the girls to go all out. When else do you get the chance to wear a proper hat nowadays? Number 7. One for Sorrow Maybe it's the lingering influence of paganism, but the British can be a superstitious lot. The magpie thing, for instance, is getting entirely out of hand. 
Most people know the familiar rhyme, one for sorrow, two for joy, although you might not remember all the way up to 13. But now it's also widely acknowledged that one magpie seen by two will bring joy to the both of you. And if you don't have a friend at hand, don't despair, you can still cancel out all the bad luck by either saluting the bird or addressing it with the immortal words, Hello Mr Magpie, how's your wife and children? You might get some funny looks, but it's probably worth it to put your mind at rest. Those are pretty Number birds. six, conkers. I've never heard of them. In a simpler time, before all these newfangled gadgets, British children would spend many happy hours entertaining themselves with the seeds of the horse chestnut tree tied to bits of string. Ah, the good old days, eh? But Conkers, the traditional children's game, is actually Ow. still played in Britain. There's even a world championship. When the Conkers are ready, nice and big and easily cracked. I can't imagine, like, them televising that. How do you even come up with this? Boredom. Cracked <laughs> open. You can drill holes in them and thread them through with string. The aim of the game is to smash each other's conkers until they break. I just Using know, hardening I just, I'm getting flashbacks of my childhood with string games like this, and someone always gets hurt. Like, <laughs> that chestnut I know has hit someone in their face yeah, or, I'm sure. or their hand knuckle. I'm sure. Um, but I, I guess feel like, it's better yeah. than being on an iPad. Wait, and this reminds me, like, the only really string game that I played when I was younger. The one, I forget You called. have to, there's a ball know. hanging in, like, a cup, and you have to, like, get the ball into the cup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was one, I, I don't remember what it was called, um... I don't remember what you have to do. It was kind of—it was like something on a string, and you kind of had to like. Wait, like that why does that sound faster familiar? And faster, and then my sister thought I stole hers, even though I didn't. I my sister was such a bully. I love her, but she was such a bully, and I still have a scar on my hand from when she tried to snatch it away from me, and mm. my dad got really upset at her. <laughs> oh man. I have a lot of scars from my sister. Methods such as baking, boiling, or painting with Siblings. nail varnish is considered cheating. Number five, dancing face. around the maypole. Maypole dancing oh, is a spring real? tradition which still survives in many like areas of, of Europe. In SpongeBob. the UK, the practice dates back to before the 14th century. Nowadays, maypoles conjure associations with Merry England, Morris dancers, and May. It's giving midsummer. I was thinking that too, I just didn't want to say it. Queens, but they actually have quite a checkered history and have been outlawed on more than one occasion. Most May Day what? celebrations involve a maypole uh. dance of which there are many variations. This is usually executed by pairs of boys and girls who weave around each other in opposite directions until their ribbons meet at the base of the maypole. It can all Cute. get quite complicated and usually requires plenty of practice sessions to get it right on the big day. Number four, Christmas crackers. Have you ever watched a British yeah, film or TV special we set do? at Christmas time and been baffled yeah, by those yeah, colourful paper crowns that long wears around the dinner table? That's then you're evidently not from the UK. Mm -mm. So here's the lowdown. Chris your sister literally gave us one last year. Not well, not this past Christmas, oh, like a year Oh, that's before. what that is. I and thought it I, always has a crown inside. I thought he meant like food, like food crackers. D can you use your context clues and see what's in front of you? Christmas crackers are not just some made-up magical items. They mean like a popper, like Potter. a cracker. They're yep. bought in yeah. boxes and laid out by each place setting at Christmas dinner. At some point, you'll take a break from stuffing yourself with turkey and sprouts and pull a cracker with your nearest neighbor. The person left with the big end wins the contents. That's usually a hey. joke, a toy or puzzle, and the aforementioned paper hat, which you're obliged mm. to wear at least for a few minutes. Number three. Morris dancing. Every country should have a traditional dance, if only to wheel out on national holidays and confuse tourists. Morris dancing is a rural English folk dance that can be traced back <laughs> to the time of Henry VIII. You know although it it's is custom. thought no, it's kind of cool. I'm just saying it's earlier. cool. That's the dancers usually wear white or tattered jackets and attach bells to their shins. <clears throat> In small groups, they dance a ding, series ding. of rhythmic steps, usually I mean, to the, accordion yeah, music, cool. over tobacco pipes set on the ground. They wave handkerchiefs and clap sticks and swords together. The dance style saw a big revival in the 1890s and then again in the 1950s and 60s. According Damn, to I a just, 2020 I just, survey... I just imagine this like back in the 1600s, exactly 1700s, I'm yeah. doing this. It's insane. I have yeah. to imagine most of these things started out of just pure boredom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I'm like, sure. Yeah. 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 Pride and boredom. Let's do something fun, Mari. That was a horrible accent. I'm sorry. There are still around 14,000 Morris dancers in the UK. Number two, bonfire night. 
Remember, ah, remember the fifth of November, gunpowder, <clears throat> treason, and plot. So goes the famous rhyme, which refers to a foiled attempt to blow a parliament back in 1605. Guy Fawkes was arrested while guarding explosives that were intended to assassinate the Protestant king, James I. We commemorate the event on Guy Fawkes <laughs> Night, now more commonly known as Bonfire Night. The history of the holiday is steeped in anti-Catholic sentiment, but nowadays it's just an excuse to light bonfires, set off fireworks, and celebrate the return of cold winter nights. We do still burn effigies, though. It's not unusual to see local kids dragging around a stuffed approximation of Guy Fawkes dressed in their dad's old jumper and asking Penny for the guy. Wait, Number one. I'm kind of curious, though. So, the, I know they're not super religious, but then what, what does the main religion in the UK? Is it like Christian or like what, what's that? What's I don't understand what Protestant is, but that's what I hear a lot. I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not an expert on religion in the UK. But yeah, I, I always thought it was like, Catholicism. <laughs> no, that's more like Irish. Okay, well, part of Ireland in the UK. Well, no, I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, let, let I us know. I'm pretty sure my grandmother was technically. Was she Protestant? I don't know. What's the other one? But she's Scottish. Yeah, I know. What was it? What was the other one? Uh, Pesca. <laughs> Pescatarian. What are Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that she one was, before. She wasn't practicing, but yeah. I'm pretty sure her family was. I don't know. My we need, yeah, we need to look Catholic. that up, but you guys also let us know in the comments. Yeah, I don't really know. I feel like a lot of it stems just from Christianity in general. Yeah, yeah. I, I could it's see all, that. I think it's just like all pra packaged differently. It's like subgenres. Right, but then they said it was an anti-Catholic. Catholic, yeah, that's why yeah. I was. That's what was made me wonder that. Yeah, there has to be something to unpack there that we definitely don't know about. Exactly. On cheese rolling, <laughs> we're not saying the British are eccentric, but in Gloucestershire, Look every stressed. spring bank holiday they hold a I world famous that. contest which involves chasing a wheel of cheese. Yeah, there's a lot of people watching. Hill. The Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Where's Wake is believed to have originated over 600 oh, years cheese. ago. Damn. It hasn't changed much in essentials. So they but have now to contestants beat it travel down the hill? The no, world there's no way that's beat. happening. The rules are simple. The wheel like, of... D if anyone wants to know why men <laughs> truly... Die earlier than women? Not only that, but should be limited in the decision making <laughs> in the world... Show them this video. Double Gloucester cheese gets one second head start down the 200-yard hill, and the chasers follow after it. It doesn't sound Why particularly high. Why does the cheese get a head start? Hold if on, it's hold on. I'm trying faster. to hear the rules. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Why does the cheese get a head start if they clearly need because the I head start? Because I think it's whoever ends the closest to it first wins. I think they need the head start. Not the high the risk, cheese. but the ambulances are always on hand <laughs> and get plenty of work to do. It's been oh, described shit. as the world's most dangerous foot race, but it looks like lots of fun. It does. Do you agree with all picks? That looks All right. That looks like a concussion waiting to happen. Yeah, that was pretty. That looks cool. If you've ever participated in, in the cheese wheel beating down the hill contest, I need to know. Yeah, honestly, let us know. And I, I kind of want to do that now. I bet you do. Let us know if they allow foreigners to do that. <laughs> um no that was, that, that was funny i i don't think i mean most of those were like i guess a little weird they're just i don't think they were weird not weird but they're just yeah seem probably more seem common to different yeah yeah exactly but that was a cool video you guys you aren't that it. weird okay yeah just enough I'm uh, sure there's we're probably weird weirder here. here yeah weirder. anyway uh i'd some custom traditions that you guys do in your country uh, yes. especially if they are actually weird because i need to know things that people still do not something that like their grandparents did yeah that's true um yeah thanks for watching sorry about the bad lighting uh, i'm pretty sure our next video we're gonna be in the same light because scheduling conflicts uh so yep like and sorry like and subscribe guys all right jump over to our vlog channel we'll see you next time Peace.